hi there, my name is Joe, and I'm a futurist. <laughs> you know, I get that a lot. And after the chuckles finally die down, the next thing is a question typically, which is, so Mr. Futurist, why don't you tell us how we can predict the future? And what most people don't understand is the answer to that question is really pretty simple. You just Google it. <laughs> and if you do, you will discover that the best way to predict the future is to create it. Or at least that's what Alan Kay, one of the people who have created our modern computer age, would tell us. Or it might have been Peter Drucker, world famous management consultant. Google's a little unclear about this. <laughs> In fact, it could have been Abraham Lincoln who said it first. You remember him, 16th president, and at least according to the internet, world of famous zombie hunter. Now, it really doesn't matter if Google's not sure who said this first, because it is still really good advice for us to be considering today. Why take a gamble on the future if you can actually have some influence in shaping it? But that's where the question gets a little bit more complicated. How indeed can we create the future? To find an answer to that, we need an authority much better than Google. But fortunately, some anonymous map makers from the 14th century have left behind some clues. I know it's not really much to look at, is it, by today's standards? No voice from the cloud telling us exactly where we are and that we've made the wrong turn and we need to recalculate? <laughs> but it'll always get us to our destination? Not so sure that's true with this map. All the map makers had a pretty good idea of where they were. They had a pretty good sense that if you headed out in that direction, you'd pass a couple of islands they were familiar with. But beyond that, all they knew about were sea dragons and monsters. And if you made it past them, well, the most likely outcome is you'd just sail off the edge of the earth. But this was an incredibly important map because it wasn't about directions. You see, this map tells a story. It tells a story about a future that no one else had ever imagined. And if you were brave enough to take one of these chances, climb aboard one of those small ships and sail off into the future, you could create a world no one else ever had. And it worked. Thousands of adventurers did that. And the result of their efforts to create the future was to create the world we live in today. So one of the most important things that we need to thank these people for is teaching us that tomorrow always begins with a story. You see, this is the important part. The future does not exist. It is not some destination out on the horizon waiting for us to show up next week. The future will be created by our actions or the actions of others. And what inspires us to take action? Almost always, it is the stories that we tell each other about the future. So if you want some sense of what tomorrow may be, a great place to start is to listen to the stories we're telling each other today about tomorrow. And you know what? That future sounds pretty bright and exciting to me, doesn't it? Because of technology, we're promised a world full of bright, big, beautiful tomorrows. There'll be opportunities for new ways to create wealth, new connections, new experiences. And why wouldn't we believe that? Technology has been our friend for the last century. It has done more to improve our life than almost anything we can imagine. We live better, longer lives today than we ever have before. But you know what? If you look a little closer at some of the stories we're telling each other today about the future, I'm not so sure how bright they really are. I'm a little concerned about what's behind some of that polish. Let me see if I can try to explain to you what I mean. In the future, we will always be connected. There are already nearly as many cell phones in the world today as there are people. Add all of the computers and the tablets, and we are truly a connected global network. And we already use all those devices to stay connected with each other 24-7 with our friends, with our family, with strangers, with those Nigerian princesses with the millions of dollars that they're supposed to give us. I'm still waiting for mine. I know it's coming. Okay. But this is just the beginning. In just a few short years, we'll all be wearing augmented reality glasses or even contact lens with all the power of a computer and a TV screen built in. The real world and the virtual world will merge seamlessly. There will be no idea, no information, no individual that we cannot have access to immediately. What could possibly be missing from that story? Possibly the acknowledgement that every time you click on a website, yes, even Ashley Madison, someone at Google or Facebook is watching. The owners of the information highway are collecting our most private information, who we talk to, text, tweet, Snapchat, instant message. 
and they are keeping it in files with our names written on it big. But what's the worry? The people, or in many cases the machines collecting all that information, have no nefarious purposes. And besides, you willingly gave them that information. You did read the use agreement, right? Of course you did. We all do. So what could possibly go wrong here? In the future, everything and everyone may be automated. For as long as we can remember, we have dreamed of a world where everyday labor and drudgery will be passed off to machines and friendly robots, leaving us to live in a world of abundant leisure and pleasure time. You know what, folks? The amazing thing is, for the first time ever, we may be really close to creating that reality. Now, there are only about two million robots in the world today, just enough to you know, basically populate a city the size of Orlando. But most of the people who are experts in this area suggest that within 10 years, that number is going to totally skyrocket. And these future robots are not going to be just building our cars and sniffing out bombs. They're going to be companions for our elderly, teachers for our children, and they may be servants for you and me. But the robots are just the sideshow in the automated future. It's the computers, like IBM's Watson, that are proving that machines have the ability to solve problems that in the past we thought only a human mind could do. It is a very real possibility that in the near future, we will be able to get rid of all of the accountants, most of our health professionals, and yes, even the lawyers, with a simple piece of software. Who's not going to sign up for that? Of course, that leaves an interesting question. What about the rest of us? By some estimates, by 2025, 40 to 50 percent of all jobs will be done by some form of automation. These machines will do this work faster, cheaper, and better than the humans that they have replaced. But hey, I don't want to be a downer. It's not all bleak. These same experts say that some parts of the economy will be left for humans. So for you parents out there planning for your children's future, it turns out that in the future the best occupation will be janitorial. It seems even the robots don't want to clean toilets. <laughs> in the future, our every desire will be fulfilled instantly. Who needs a job? We live in a world of abundant goods and services created by all of these machines for us, and they're all just at a touch of our fingertip. Need the latest gadget or the newest fashion? It's a click away. And before you know it, Amazon is going to know what you need before you even imagine it exists. They're going to send out their drone delivery vehicles to send you things that are so cool that you never could live without them, even if you'd never heard of them before. You know, that sounds pretty exciting to me. As long as we don't spend too much time thinking about what happens with those cool new gadgets when they become so last moment. The World Bank estimates that by 2025, we will be producing 11 million tons of garbage every day. But hey, don't worry. I'm sure there's some entrepreneur out there already trying to figure out how to turn it into energy or food or something else they can sell back to us, right? Is it me? Am I paranoid? Am I a little crazy here? Or is there something missing from these stories? And it's not that the future is going to have some bad side effects. The future will never be perfect. The past never was either. But what concerns me is who's creating the visions of tomorrow for us right now. It's a select group of people who plan to profit from it more than the rest of us. So my question is this. Are these the tomorrows we really want to create? What would happen if we decided we were going to decide what the future was going to be? How would we do that? It starts by taking back the power to tell our stories. You see, if we change our stories, we change our tomorrows. Let me give you an example. Climate change. Today, the conventional narrative is basically one of two horrible options. We can continue to live the way we live in our high lives and tons of consumption, and if we do that, well, basically, the planet's screwed. The only good option anybody gives us is we can start to cut back our lifestyles, curtail all of our consumption, if we want Mother Nature to have any chance of surviving. At best, we are told we can do less harm. What if we challenge that narrative? What if we suggested that there was a future where we could actually benefit both nature and human beings? That's what my colleague, John Robinson, at the University of British Columbia in Canada did a couple of years ago. He set the bar higher. He said that it was possible for human action to actually help humans and improve the environment, to create a net positive future. 
As a result of that story, they created a building on that campus that produces energy for the other buildings on campus, that creates wastewater that is cleaner than the water that they start with, and that decreased the overall carbon footprint because of the materials they used to build it. And he's just one of many environmentalists who are changing the future of sustainability. Is the only story of the future economy one in which most of us have to be cogs in the information world? Is there another alternative, one that empowers individuals and actually creates better communities? Ask more than 50% of the recent college grads who said that their vision of the future was to work for themselves in jobs that made a difference, and you get one glimpse of what that possibility is. And here's the really interesting secret about this, folks. All this technology that makes it possible for traditional businesses to do more with less people can be used to turn the entire situation on its head. Access to information and advances in things like 3D printing mean that in a few years you might be able to create in your own home most of the things that you buy today. Think about what that really means for just a minute. The next time you wanted to buy a pair of tennis shoes, instead of going to some giant multinational corporation that mines the raw materials in Africa, sends them all the way to China, has them manufactured in some less than desirable conditions, puts them on a boat, ships them all the way back across the world, repackages them, and then delivers them to you, you might sit down at your home computer, go online and find the plans for those same shoes, maybe for free, embellish them so that they were personalized for you, buy a little ink, and move you've got your new pair of tennis shoes. And what's even better, when you get tired of them, all of the components can be recycled by you right there and used again. Oh yeah, and all those connections you've been making around the world, they can become your customers if you want to share the design that you have created. You see, in a world where information is the key asset, access to information makes anybody a producer. Can you imagine a future where wealth grows from the bottom up? I can. I think it would be pretty exciting. Ah, technology. She is beautiful. <laughs> but she can be bewitching. Every story we imagine about the future is going to be based on technology. We need it. It makes our life better. But it is time that we begin to demand more from technology than we have in the past. It is time that with technology improve our humanness. We no longer need to be thinking about how we should be adapting to machines, exactly the opposite. We need to imagine machines that will make us better people. What that means is, is that technology has to ensure opportunity, fairness, and equity. It means that technology should be controlled by the people who use it, not by absentee owners. It means that we need to stop and pause and consider the potential side effects of every new technology, no matter how glitzy it is when it is first promised to us. So what do all these stories have in common? They're meant to inspire us, to inspire us to imagine a future that will actually provide more opportunity for all of us, a better tomorrow. Now, I know that most of you might have a different definition of what a better tomorrow will be, and that's fine. Because the more stories that we can imagine, the more opportunities we will create. So I would urge you right now to start telling your own stories. Because if we change our story, we can change our tomorrow. Get your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers together and start building those stories of tomorrow. Oh yeah, and this is an important part. Invite all those voices who typically don't get to be part of this conversation. We want our future to be better for everyone. Change our stories, we can change our tomorrows. These stories will become our maps to the future. They will be filled with inaccuracies. They will get us lost so many times it's not even funny. And we will undoubtedly engage with monsters and probably space dragons along the way. But they will become the foundation for our bright new tomorrows. A world where the future provides more opportunity for everybody. It is our future. Don't you think we should be trying to create it? I certainly do. I think that's a heck of a lot better than sitting around trying to predict what future someone else is going to create for us. So I urge you, start dreaming, start creating, start building better tomorrows. Thank you.